Hey, uh, this week we're going to do a few things. We're going to look at prayer and fasting. We talked about that this weekend. Um, and I, uh, I'm i kind of shifting gears. Uh, in in uh, December, we're going to talk about Advent. Advent's a beautiful season, looking, looking forward to Christ's coming. And so I hope that you will uh, be with us. We'll be lighting a candle each week, talking about each one of the unique elements in the four weeks leading up to Christmas. Uh, so that's fun. Uh, but this week, kind of Thanksgiving week, we want to do two things. I want to give you a little bit in terms of prayer and fasting, because fasting is maybe the most neglected um, spiritual habit and discipline uh, in our era. And it was, ne it was never neglected um, in the early church, uh, in early Christianity, uh, in, in the life of Christ, his followers, uh, and before Jesus, the Old Testament, it was it was not neglected at all, but it's become incredibly neglected um, in our era. We don't want to, for God's sake, don't make me do without food, right? i got to have food. Um, I could fear all kinds of things, losing my job, all, uh, all kinds of things, but nothing, I mean, nothing is worse than not being able to eat. So we'll talk about fasting and why it's important, why we should uh, not just entertain it, but apply it to our lives and add it to our spiritual rhythm and our, and our rule of life. And then we'll also spend some time just rejoicing over Thanksgiving week and all, all the reasons why we as believers um, should lead the way in gratitude, uh, in a spirit of gratitude and thankfulness. Uh, so all that, all that good stuff. Um, when you think about prayer, I, I love this little um, thing I shared. The prayer has three, three dominant movements or distinct movements in a believer's life. The first is upward um, for our connection and intimacy with God. The second is inward for our um, extraction of whatever gets in the way of God. And the third is our connection to others uh, for the love of God. So, so those three things, um, it should move me upwards, it should move me inwards, and should move me outwards. And fasting is kind of like all three of those on steroids. All three of those supercharged. So when we learn to have a rhythm of fasting, it can help us cultivate our connection and intimacy with God, our movement upward. It can very much so empower us in our move in our in our direction inward. In the inward direction for extraction, that means elimination of anything that gets in the way of God. And then it should also enable us, empower us in our in our move outward to love others for God, both the believer and the unbeliever. Uh, so this week, I just want to encourage you. Um, if you've never, if you've never fasted, let me just give you a couple little things to think about. One is start slow, um, like skip a meal, skip a meal with intentionality, not on it, not on accident. Like, oh, I skipped a meal. I guess I fasted today. No, with intentionality, I'm going to skip this meal, and I'm going to during the space where I would normally be eating or planning to eat or thinking about eating or going to eat, I'm going to instead do one of those three things. I'm going to move upward for connection and intimacy with God. I'm just going to take that time and say, Lord, I want to, I want to uh, increase my hunger for you. And so I'm going to take this moment and just spend time with you, Lord. And so let that move you upward or inward to recognize, wow, what am I distracted? What am I hungry for on the inside instead of God? Um, and when I feel this sense of hunger inside, Lord, let me recognize that, that I want to say no to this earthly appetite to develop a deeper appetite for you and to recognize what are the things that when I'm doing without food, when I'm denying self, what are the things that bubble up that I can extract that I can recognize oh that's a distraction oh that's pulls me away from the Lord oh that's a hunger that I way I feed way too often um, so that or or outward that I'm gonna take that time and I'm gonna instead uh, feed a person who's hungry uh, feed someone who doesn't have uh, food I'm gonna 
uh, care for someone. I'm going to write some notes to someone. I'm going to I'm going to move outward to others, not saying, hey, I'm fasting so I can do this for you. Just doing it for them in the space and place where there would be food. So this week, consider uh, skipping a meal. Uh, if you've done that before or you're uh, eager to take a little bigger, a bigger bite out of not eating, um, go for it. Go for a single day. Um, after your evening, after your evening meal, don't eat until evening again. So go all the way around the clock until the evening again. So skip food throughout your day. I uh, encourage you drink water at least. Um, fasting in the Bible was not about um, ancillary things. It was about food. Um, and so take some time and ask God to begin to speak to you as you learn to uh, leverage prayer in those three directions and watch how fasting kind of supercharges your attentiveness, your awareness that, oh, I'm doing something in order to engage God, engage greater insight about myself or greater ability to sacrificially love others. Lord Jesus, we uh, just acknowledge, or I acknowledge that until about six months ago, I never fasted regularly. Um, and now I do. Um, and Lord, it helps me to tune in to you. Um, it helps me tune in to myself and it helps me to tune in to the needs of others. Lord, meet us in this place as we begin to explore what it looks like to give up a meal or a day of eating or a couple days in order to be more mindful of the things that we were really created for, not just to satiate our appetite for food, but most importantly, to remember that man does not live on bread alone, but every word that proceeds from the mouth of God, Lord, to satiate ourselves on you. Thank you, Jesus. I will look forward to being with you this week. God bless you as you plan for Thanksgiving. I'll see you soon. Thanks.